Welcome to another Mobile Forensic Explainers. Um, my name is Alex Briggs Brignoni, and today I want to discuss, as uh, you can see here on the sign on my, over my shoulder, uh, FCM, that's Firebase Code Messaging and Level DBs in Android devices. I believe this is one of the most uh, underutilized, pretty much unknown artifacts in the Android world, and I think your investigations will benefit immensely from knowing first that they exist and second, uh, what can they provide to, to you, right? So let's talk about that. So Firebase Code Messaging, what is it? Firebase Code Messaging is a, uh, a system that's uh, made to, let me share here this, my screen with you. Um, there we go. Perfect. It's a system made by uh, Google in order to send messages from a server to a client, right? In this case, mobile device clients. It's really lightweight, it's uh, scalable. That means that if you have an app that has a million users, you should be able to send a message to them fairly um, efficiently, low overhead. And when those messages are sent, they are kept within that device. It could be any type of messages. It could be like an actual message in the sense of content that you can read. Like I'm sending you a message. Some of that content might be there. Notifications and information containing notifications can and are uh, is sent using this FCM, Firebase code, code messaging uh, uh, system or server client model. Okay. Um, internal app data that is not human readable is also uh, sent through these channels. So there's a variety of data that comes through it and that uh, as of today, uh, most of our forensic tools are blind to them and it could be useful for your investigations, okay? Now, where are these found, These uh, this information, how is it kept within Android devices? Well, FCM uses as the data store or the data structure to keep these messages uh, uses a thing called level DV. All right. And level DVs look like this. And let me, and I'm, I'm going to show you here the, uh, the how, how the uh, data structure uh, or in a folder looks when you get to that directory in your Android devices. So it looks like this. So you go to your data data uh, directory. Then you go to com.google.android.gms, the files directory, and then FCM, obviously, Firebase Code Messaging, queued messages.ldb. That LDB um, directory has within it a whole bunch of level DB files that you can see there on screen. Okay. In super, super important that we start analyzing and looking at, at these files because I can mention actual message content can be there. Now, a, a big caveat you need to understand. FCM is a client server model, right? So, or server client, I should say. The server pushes the messages out to the clients, but the clients don't respond back to the server. What that means is that if the, your application is sending notifications or messages, they're one way. And when you recover that data from the device, you're gonna get only half of that conversation or just the entry message, any responses, uh, will not be kept within these level db uh, stores okay so keep that in mind still super important again let's say you're we're looking for messages and let's say the user deletes the application that the messages are in at least through the fcm level db structure we can find some of those messages and have a conversation is way more than no conversation at all right so it's pretty pretty useful okay so now, now we know where they are right if you're interested in the data structure of level DBs. And, and, and let, me, let me say something else. These level DB structures are used in computers, in Androids, in iOSs, in a whole bunch of different places, specifically in Chrome or any other source of browsers. Level DB data is kept in browsers all around. And the reason for that, and I use case for that is uh, web apps. Let's say you have uh, an app that you can do like word processing through the browser. These apps have the functionality that allow you to work on your document without having an internet connection. And you may ask yourself, well, this is a web app, right? The data should be saved in the server. But what happens when I don't have an internet connection? The application, that web application still is able to save and keep track of your data until you have a 
in a net connection where that data is then pushed up to the cloud for permanent storage. The question is, where's this data on my computer, right? You don't hit file, save as when you're using a web app or a, a text editor or document editor um, through a browser. Well, automatically the browser knows that it needs to be saved in this level DB data stores. That's where it's kept. And uh, a whole bunch of apps do this. They're called Electron apps. And Electron apps are apps, they look like an app, behave like an app, but they're actually in reality, just browsers <laughs> that trick us into thinking they're apps. <laughs> and uh, there's a whole bunch of them, right? Uh, like the Signal, uh, um, Skype, a whole bunch of different applications, Electron apps. It's a browser, a scheme browser, and data is kept in level DB stores, right? Alex Caithness from CCL Solutions Group in the UK. He's been, uh, I believe, one of the trailblazers or the first person that I know of that really um, captured my attention in regards to the amount of data that is kept and how useful can this be uh, within Android devices specifically, okay? So he did a, uh, a full-on analysis in his blog post. And let me put that on the screen here so you can see it. And again, like as always, all of these uh, links and resources will be contained within the notes at the bottom of, of the video in the description, okay? And what, what he did with this FCM data is that he analyzed, you can see here how the, the format that I just described, you can see it here. And then he went inside the FCM and started studying what the file structure is, all the different fields, if they're compressed, it's called snappy compression. And then that's not a video, um, the scope for this video, but you can have here all the explanation of all the offsets, um, how um, these double DB databases contain protobuf within it and explains there what the uh, applicability of those are. So it's a pretty detailed article on how FCM and level DB databases operate. So again, great resource is there on the screen. It's gonna be in the notes uh, for you to, to watch now. This research that uh, that uh, Alex pioneered, he didn't stop at just the research. He did an application. And one of the first applications was uh, for a code. Let's see if I have the right link here. No, this is where I was right now. There we go. Code to uh, in Python to be able to uh, extract this level DB stores and see those contents. There is Python based, they're open, uh, they're free to use. Again, thanks to Alex and CCL Solutions Group for making that available. Here's the uh, a link right on the screen. Um, if you wanna use those scripts directly to parse those uh, level DB databases in Chrome browsers or any, any compatible browser. A good application of those was done by Brian Benson. Again, really well-known uh, examiner. And he took that code and combined it with all the different artifacts and code he has uh, had generated uh, to make analysis of uh, Chrome databases. So you can run the tool and it will make a timeline with all the important facts for the browser to include level DB uh, data. Super, super useful, highly recommended. So let me put that also on that on the screen. And that's the, uh, the link where you can find uh, the tool and here's the, the timeline you can see quickly on screen of all the different artifacts and items of importance within those data stores. Now, we mentioned that you got the FCM system uses level DB to keep that data. We know where it's located on the device. And I mentioned it could have messages, it could have notifications, it could have internal data for the apps. How does those look after we, uh, you know, analyze them and parse them using uh, that knowledge that we gained from from Alex that he was so <clears throat> so kind to provide to us. So let me show you here. How does that look? So if you use uh, again, if you use uh, a leap um, to look at the data, you will have your report here as we're used to by now. On the left, the different categories, and you can see here on the left all the FCM categories that you have. Okay. And then on the right, what the contents are. And let me show you attention here. Let me maybe zoom in a little bit. Notice here on the right, how you have, you know, within an entry in a particular uh, level DB database, it says, yep, how many numbers do you have? 
right? And if we scroll into the data, you have a, there four, four though, right? Main, secondary, burner, and Google Voice. So, and you can see phone numbers as well. So we can see, it's pretty obvious. This is like part, one side of a conversation that's growing through this app. In this case, it's the burner app. Really important note, level DB stores within FCM remain as of today on the device, even if you delete the app, which is amazing. The app is deleted, that information is kept there. So super, super useful things that you can read, right? Some other things we can see sometimes in these databases is data that's not apparent, the usefulness at the beginning. Let me zoom in. Look at this other app here. This is for the Google Quick Search Box. Some of that functionality to do searches on Android devices, also to receive uh, notifications from Google and the like. And notice this field here, CASP, and it has what is pretty obvious to be like a base 64 uh, encoded data. So what is that? You know, if you're not an examiner, you might not think twice about it and just ignore it. But we're, we're examiners, so we're curious. That's what defines us. <laughs> That's why we're here. So if you scroll, you see it's a big, big chunk of data, right? So if you see a lot of base 64, your, your curiosity, right, is going to tell us to do something about it. So one way that I want to suggest to you is that get cyber, go to or get CyberChef, right? And CyberChef, and I'm going to show you here on the screen right now, it's a tool developed um, by the government of the UK, and you can access that online. Uh, my suggestion to you is if you're going to use CyberChef, as I'm going to show you now how to use it, um, do that, a download, and do a local installation uh, within your system, right? Don't use the one on the website. It's better to do the one locally. What you see here on screen is three panes. You have, or, you know, divisions within the screen. On this part here, my mouse is moving. Um, it's the operations. What things are you were able to do? The recipe is what the operations in what order I want them. The input is pretty much what I'm going to look at, and the output is what's going to be shown after all these operations are executed on my input data or data that I input or put in. Okay. So let's take. I have here um, all that data that we saw, that really long base 64 data. I have it here, so I'm going to copy it and let me copy it here. And the first thing I'm going to do is let me put that input right there. Let me see, making this a little bit bigger here. Let me, I'm going to put that input there. Oops, not there. Here, there we go. So we have base 64 output base 64 because we're not doing any operations. So I know it's base 64 just by looking at it. So I'm going to say, okay, from base 64, I'm going to put that in my recipe column and immediately if you look here on the bottom the output window you can see some things you can read already you see search notification tomorrow mostly sunny right and either because you know you did your research or because you did some testing trial and error you figured out that hey this data is further encoded in protobuf so you can go here again to the operations column select protobuf decode and drag that over to the recipe underneath the base64 operations. And you can see here on the left, then now we have more order, right? You can see the different fields. Tomorrow in Holly Springs, mostly sunny, the temperature for the full forecast. You can see some additional binary data and additional fields, numerical fields in the bottom, okay? If we, we change those numerical fields, the, the interpretation from, let's say, a fix64 to a different type of data set, you be surprised what you can find. And what did you find on those numbers after we do this analysis? Well, thanks again to Josh Higman's research and the, the data sets that he created for us. What you see here on screen is that final output. You see a timestamp, latitudes, and longitudes, and the location where those are. And again, based on Josh's research, these geolocations are pretty, pretty spot on, pretty accurate, right? So notice that. We have a data source, FCM, within the data source, I'm sorry, data source is double DB, within the FCM functionality, that can remain after an app is deleted. The data could be messages, or at least part of the, half of the conversation, could be uh, system data for the apps for, to work, or it could be encoded data of interest. For example, geolocation, latitude, longitude points. You see base 64, you can decode that. If there's further decoding, decode that as well. And you'll be surprised of what type of data 
of use you can find, right? And this particular example, we went from zero geolocation points, for example, to 36 geolocation points. That might be key for your investigation, depending on that timestamp. And again, on the left, the tooling, um, ALEAP will, any level DBs that it finds within the FCM directory, <clears throat> it will parse them. And you can see here, see, see them here on the left. If I'm able to dig deeper in them and make a uh, kind of clean them up a little bit, take them from base 64 to port above to actual usable data, then you will see here on the left, uh, the name of that artifact is going to be FCM dash clean dash whatever the the app is, right? FT FCM dash clean and whatever it is. For example, FCM dot clean um, musically, which is TikTok. And you can see there's some notifications for the TikTok application that, um, you know, after I did that clean up that decoding, okay? Um, SEM clean Instagram, and you can see there some of that content has been uh, decoded. And you can do that also, you know, on your own. And if you decode some of those that are not decoded by the tool um, that have different values, um, let me know and that what the process was and be part of the community. Help us develop further artifacts and, and usefulness for, for everybody to benefit, okay? With that, I think, let me stop here. I think we pretty much covered it. So be on the lookout, Android devices, make your extractions. As of today, I don't know of any tool that has a particular artifact like, like the one Aleep has. Again, thank you to Alex Cadness for the research and putting the code together for this to work as part of the community CCL Solutions Group for allowing it and supporting it. And again, use the tooling. Uh, decode things and and let us know thank you so much for watching hopefully this was helpful have a nice day